begs your pardon. He's terribly sorry. Look, Steve, I'm terribly worried about you. Huh? I've never seen you take love like this before. Oh, I've never been in love with a girl like Cynthia. Oh, Cynthia. Well, I'm not against marriage as an institution, but as a husband, you'll still be a chaser. Wait till you meet Cynthia. Bet you tend to one you fall out of love as fast as you fell in. Oh, just, just wait till you meet Cynthia. I can wait. We lived that long. Say, hey, look at all the couples. Pick out any pair that looks happy. Then ask the husband if he's ever chased. Well, I can't ask personal questions of strangers. Bet you a hundred bucks. Oh, it's a bet? Yeah. Oh, well, let's do it. Uh, excuse us, but uh, if we're... Um... Uh, we're taking a, a, a gallop pole. Of uh, marriage. <laughs> we assume that you're both happily married. <laughs> oh, a divine lady. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> they're, uh, they're both happily married, but uh, not to each other. How's my turn? Oh, I, I beg your pardon. Do you mind if I ask you a personal question? No. Uh, happily married, of course. Of course. Before you were married, uh, did you ever chase? Why, you wretch. Oh, you want to play, eh? Oh, please don't do this. He has Get out of here. Get out of here. Oh, oh no, you don't. Bring him. Bring him. Stop this. All right. I beg your pardon. I beg. I never give anything to beggars. Young man, you have probably splintered my sacrilege. Say nothing of chichis. Yes, I've been bumping into things all night. That is no excuse. When's your birthday? Yeah, May 12th, but I never expect presents, really. May, May uh, two presents. Well, it's a very fortunate thing we're strangers. Our numbers clash. Young man, you spell trouble for me. <laughs> I, I, I didn't get what you said. Your vibrations, your vibrations. Young man. I hope I shall never have the pleasure of meeting you again. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Why don't you go away? New York crowded, isn't it? May the 12th. See? Chichi doesn't like you either. It's funny, I usually get along better with dogs than with anybody. <laughs> Our place to check your hat. Too bad your head wasn't in it. Now look here, I don't know you and you don't know me. We'll be out of here in a few minutes, even if I was born on May 12th. with those buttons. There, now. You've broken it. I did nothing of the sort. Don't tell me I saw you do it. Young man, you're bad luck to me. This elevator will be out of order while you're in it. Is that so? Then there's only one thing for me to do. Now what are you doing? Taking a hit. You, I, oh! 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 You done taking up street sweeping? Yes, I. Oh. I... Well, it's a nice hobby. At least it keeps you out in the open. Oh, Cynthia. You like it? It just came and I, I couldn't wait to try it on. Oh, Cynthia. <laughs> Darling. 
Can't you say anything but, oh, Cynthia? Oh, I forgot. You shouldn't be seeing me in this. I never want to see anything else. <gasps> but it's bad luck. I have to go and change it. Oh, say, darling, by the way, what happened to Lucky? Who? Lucky, you know, the best man. Oh, well, he got delayed a little. Oh, I see. Where's your aunt? Oh, she went for a drive, but she'll be right back. Oh, there she is. Now, darling, go and open the door for her, will you? Oh, make a hit with her. <laughs> oh, you will. She'll love you. Yes, that's Steve you've been wanting to meet, and this is my Aunt Kitty. Hmm. Well, uh, what's the matter with everybody? Is that the man you're going to marry? Oh, yes. Well, what are you staring at? Has he got two heads? He knocked me down the street, he broke the elevator, he abandoned me between floors, and he was born on May the 12th. Is that your idea of making a good impression? Oh, I don't feel well. <laughs> Chi-Chi! Now he's sitting on Chi-Chi. Dog murderer. I didn't even see the mutt. Incidentally, why don't you run around with something your own size? Uh, Cynthia, get my things. I can't stay in this house another moment. Oh, now, Aunt Kitty, don't get yourself in a snit. Yeah. Steve will go. Couldn't we perhaps be a little more reasonable about this? It's just a silly accident after all. <laughs> Cynthia, get that man out of this house this minute. Uh, come on, that man, and exit as indicated. I've never seen anybody make a more interesting impression. Well, it is what I feel. Oh, Cynthia. What's the matter with her? Oh, nothing, darling. She's just getting on. But you know, when a woman reaches 40... Well... 40? I'll bet you 50 she'll never see 60 again. Is that so? Never attempt to see or communicate with my niece again. The marriage is off. Definitely off. Oh, Aunt Kitty, he Aunt didn't... Kitty, I didn't... Oh! Oh, Cynthia. It, it, it's off. You bet your life it's off. Definitely off. Striking an officer, eh? Oh, I assure you, Your Honor, it was an accident. Does that look like an accident? Disgraceful. How do you plead? Oh, guilty, of course. Of course? Do you realize you're in for a fine? And a large one? Oh, you can make it as large as you like. It won't come out of my pocket. It'll come out of somebody's. Certainly. The insurance companies. Hmm. Queer kind of insurance. Mm, not at all. My company will insure anything from teapots to televisions. Hey, what about the charge here? Quiet. I bet there's one thing you've never insured. Bet you my fine risk. What about the black eye? Order. I'm running for Superior Court in the coming elections. Could you um, come at the risk of uh, re-election? Confidentially. What are your chances? Confidentially. I'm a cinch. Fine. I'll insure you for twice your salary. Just a little matter of putting your autograph on the undotted line, right there. I never did see such goings on. Is this a court or a bargain counter? Order. Well, thanks very much for dropping in. Oh, not at all. You can mail me the check tomorrow. Congratulations. See you in Superior Court. <laughs> hey, Judge McCracken, do you realize what you've done? You let him go without a fine. <clears throat> Sentence suspended. What's your occupation? Politician. Ninety days. My, my darling Cynthia, I could not sleep a wink last night because of my unfortunate behavior. My lovely Cynthia, due to a series of unhappy coincidences. Now that's just it. Yeah. My dearest girl, is it my fault that you have a loony aunt? Sounds bad. Say, what she feed you last night? Ant poison. Oh, Aunt Kitty, eh? Well, how'd you do? I didn't do, I went. Oh, I did all right. Like, that reminds me, don't forget to vote for a judge named McCracken. Oh, will you shut up? My marriage is practically on the rock. Oh, if I could only be sure. Be sure? Insure. Oh, I'm not interested in your screwy policies. Well, that's wonderful. Well, that's marvelous. Well, why didn't I think of that before? Think of what? Love insurance, love insurance. Oh, now I know you're crazy. I love it. Do you want to be sure you'll marry Cynthia? Well, what do you think I'm yapping about? All right, take out a policy. Love insurance. I don't get it. Look, you'd be willing to lay 10 to 1 on a horse, wouldn't you? Oh, look, a policy is no bet, and Cynthia's not a horse. But this policy would be a bet. 
I'm willing to lay a 10 to 1 on your marriage. If you marry Cynthia, you lose the bet and the premium. Well, if I don't marry Cynthia, no amount of money in the world will ever make up for her loss. I promise you, you'll get the girl, not the money. Look, have I ever lost a bet before? Did I ever have to pay off on a policy? Say, that's right. You never did, did you? No. You've always been lucky, lucky. Yes. Give me something to sign. I want to make it legal. All right. Well, that's wonderful. Lucky. Wonderful. Is Mr. Steve Harper in? Yes, there's a gentleman with him at the moment. Well, there'll be a lady with him before you can say your hootie. Ouch. Well, got to get back to the office. Oh, I hate to let you go, Lucky. You make me feel so, so lucky. Why not? You're practically a married man. But incidentally, I think that's your phone ringing. It might be Cynthia. Cynthia! I thought it was my ears ringing. Insured. Hello? Oh, Cynthia. Oh, that's sweet of you, Steve. But after all, you know, this isn't Mother's Day. Darling, if you send any more flowers, we'll have to move out. Oh, that's all right. You're welcome. I'm sorry, Mr. Fitzgerald. Mr. Harper is out. Well, I'll just come in and wait. I'm sorry. I cannot allow you to come in. But please, Miss Fitzgerald. Oh, darling, you want to play. How? Oh. You're just more than welcome. Uh, oh, I can hardly wait until this evening. Is that so? Oh, hello, Mickey. Only in the big moment? Oh, oh, no, no, not at all. I'm just, uh, just talking to my laundry. Oh, well, don't let me interrupt. Uh, hello. Oh, wait a minute, darling. Uh, I've got Aunt Kitty all soothed and ready to talk to you. Now, just a minute. Aunt Kitty! Uh, hello. I guess that'll, that'll be all for today. That'll take care of... <laughs> Look. No, Aunt Kitty is perfectly reconciled to our being married, and she'll soon love you just as much as I do. No, no, pl please. <laughs> well, I, I don't think that uh, today I'll have time to go over the list with you. Well, look, this, this thing can't, this, this thing can't go on forever, you know. Every, everything I've been setting out hasn't been coming back. Help, yeah, look. Uh, fully five pairs of socks are missing. A uh, dozen handkerchiefs, three towels. Five, three, twelve. What are you counting for? The man you're engaged to is a May 12th lunatic and a dangerous one at that. Scum! Hello? Hello? Sort of hung up. Funny people, those laundries. She has a very pretty voice, your laundry. <laughs> yes, she has. How do you know? A man who leads a double life shouldn't have two telephones. Mickey, I got a lot of things to do today. Listen, I'm not leading a double life anymore. Well, I mean, it's double only in the sense that from Saturday on, I won't be single. I'll be double. I mean, I'm going to get married. Poor Stevie, always the dreamer. You will not be married on Saturday. Because I love you, and I'm going to keep on loving you until I don't love you any longer. And if you marry anybody, it'll be me. Because if you don't marry me, you'll have too many broken legs to marry anybody else. So you can just catch your laundry back on the phone and tell her she's all washed up. Hello, Dad. Hello, son. Oh, hello, Doc. I sold so many policies, I finally convinced myself. <laughs> Take a look at that. That'll step up your liver. There's nothing the matter with your father's liver. He'll pass 100%. Ooh, 100,000 dollars. Say, there's nothing like having a go-getter for a son, eh, doctor? Well, that's right, Mr. Moore. <laughs> oh, what kind of a policy is it? Love insurance. Life insurance. That's good. Congratulations. Oh, no, Dad, not life insurance. It's something new. Love insurance. Yeah. Love. Love. Did you, did you say love, L-O-V-E? That's right. Love insurance? Did you ever hear such stupidity, such imbecility, such idiocy, such blithering gift? Love insurance? Love is a beautiful thing, Mr. Moore. Well, I can't accept you as an authority. How much is the policy for? Oh, uh, just a million. Just a million? Oh, Mr. Moore, I can hear your office hardening. What are you trying to do to me, Jim? Break me? Why, it's lunacy. It's Alice. I can't stand it. Yeah. It's plain suicide. 
No firm would take this policy. But, Dad, we already have. It's all signed. There's practically no risk. No risk! Sorry, Mr. Moore, but your blood pressure's way up. We won't be able to pass you for a policy. <laughs> Thanks to you and your blasted love insurance. Get out of here. Take it with you. To a bank. To a pawn shop. Huck it. Underwrite it. Pick yourself another victim. All of it, but if I come in for half say, that'll kind of make me partners with your own man, huh? Sure, you'd be partners. That's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is this? Now, look, don't bother me for a while, huh? Yes, sir. Might surprise a lot of folks who think all I can do is run a joint like this if I went in for insurance. Roscoe, you'd blow them over. Yeah, is this okay, yeah, boss? What do you got? I don't know. Look, look. Now, let me alone for a minute, will you? Another drink, Mr. Roscoe? No, no. If I want a drink, I'll call you. Now, let me alone. Yes, sir. Kind of crazy, though, to risk a million on Steve Harper getting hitched. Oh, he's really got it bad this time. I've invited them here tonight for you to look them over. Okay, that's great. Now, I'll scrutinize them personally. And if I'm sold, what do I do? All you have to do is sign a little piece of paper. I mean, hey. Now, what's the matter? Why, oh, it's gone, my wallet. Yeah? Oh, say, on the way in, did you pass a kind of a tall guy in a dinner coat? Yeah. Yeah, standing there with him was there a little short, stout guy? Yeah. That's what I thought. It's about time you met up with the boys. Oh. Come on, Costello. Okay, Abbott. Right, wait, wait, get away from there, Costello. What's the matter with you? Why did you do that? Oh, I'm a bad boy. Will you please go away? You've done enough damage for one day. I want to play. You, how much you want to bet? Ten dollars. Ten dollars? It's a bet. Okay. I'll bet ten dollars. Ten dollars a year. Come over here. That's the idea. Come on. Now, Come you're over talking. Here. I Come never on. knew you gambled. Come over here. Now, wait a minute. What are you doing? I'll just make a change. I'll make the change. Keep the money down there. Okay. Ten more. Ten more to you. Ten... Now, look, pal. Just a minute. Don't steal it. Win it honestly. Put it down there. No, I mean, put it there and leave it there. That's it. Give me that bill. Give me your hand. Put it in my hand like that and leave it there. Try to kid. What are you doing? I want to play. You got any more money? Oh, yeah, I got a lot of money. Let me see. Play it. Let me see it. Well, hundred dollar bills. Get a load of that. Hundred dollar bill. Five hundred dollar bill. Five hundred dollar bill. Not a hundred. Hundreds. Not a hundred. They're all hundreds. What was that? Somebody put a buck in here. No, behave yourself. I've got ten dollars. Ten dollars? Why, certainly. Now, wait a minute. I had a ten dollar bill here a minute ago. I Have you got two tens for a five? Yeah. There we are. Now, there's your ten. Come on, come on. What's the matter with you? Something wrong? Yeah, $15 went south. What do you mean? You gave me a lot of fast talk. You see, I got two tenths for a five and I give it to oh, you. Oh, you did. Wise guy. Okay, here's your five. Give me back my two tens. That's better. Now get out of here. Okay. All right, now you want ten, ten more to you. That's the idea. How about you, friend? Hiya, right, boss. Here's two tens. Give me a five. <laughs> you did it to me. And he did it to me, too. Oh, certainly. What are you doing? I don't know what I'm doing, but whatever I'm doing, I'm doing wrong. Well, here, I'll straighten you out. Here, I'll bet you $200. Okay. Now, take a number. Any number at all from one to ten. Four. No, number five. But you were close. You're getting hot. You're getting hot. Want to make a wager, boss? Why not? The bankroll. The whole works. Now, you take a number. Any number at all from one to ten. Seven. Oh, please. Boss, I'll bet you $500. Now, you take a number from one to ten. Seven. No, number eight. I had eight. They weren't even playing. Now, listen, you mugs. Cut out this nonsense and give him back his stuff. You heard the boss. Give the man back his stuff. Is it in there? Yes, this is it. Wait a minute, wait a minute. This is my wallet. I was mining it for you. Mining it for me. Now listen, you ten-cent thief. No more of this stealing. We've gone legitimate. You heard the boss. No more stealing. We've gone legitimate. But wait a minute. What are you doing with my wallet in there? What's the idea of this? Why do you do things like this? Uh oh. I'm a bad boy. Darling, if you have Aunt Kitty all soothed now, why didn't you come along with us? Oh, the address here added up to something fatal. Really? Boss wants to see you. All right with you, darling? Of course. Well, if Jim comes along, be very nice to him. You'll know him by his long gray beard. <laughs> How does he wear it? Braided? <laughs> what does Roscoe want to see me about? <laughs> Love. Your 
your lipstick, mademoiselle. Oh, thank you, Captain. And would you get me a very dry martini, please? Oh, certainly. A uh, very dry martini, please. And no olive. And no olive. Uh, it's, it's not that I'm snobbish or anything, but mightn't you get fired? I don't think so. I'm invaluable here. Oh. Well, uh, it, it's nice to be appreciated. They know a good man when they see one. Do they know a fresh one when they see one? Well, everything's fresh here, even the service. <laughs> oh, you've met! Isn't she wonderful, Jim? Jim? Why, well, I thought he was a waiter. I thought she was a knockout. <laughs> well, this is an occasion to celebrate. Uh, best friend meets girl. Did I do justice to both of you? Well, um, he's taller. She's pretty. I'm very, very happy, happy to you. meet you. <laughs> <laughs> From Mr. Roscoe. There you are. Bad news? Oh, no. Uh, just a little business. Well, here's to Saturday. Saturday. <laughs> Saturday. <coughs> What's the trouble, Steve? Oh, uh, oh. Nothing. Pardon me, please. <laughs> What's the matter with him? Uh, nothing, nothing. Uh, about your Aunt Kitty, what did she say that the number this place added up to? <laughs> I don't like the look in your eye. That's too bad. We'll see how Steve likes Anna, it. You better be quiet or I'll have the flying squad bounce you right out on your ear. Okay, you win. You don't mind if I just speak to the band leader for a minute? He's a friend of mine. No, but just for a minute. Thanks, Jim. I won't forget this. Uh... Just collected a bet on the bounce. Oh, and the bounce is right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have a surprise for you. A well-known and popular little star has volunteered to sing one of her numbers for us. Miss Mickey Fitzgerald. <laughs> Great, isn't she? I think she's coming over to talk to you, Lucky. Hey. He's a uh, restless, isn't he? Who? Him. Oh, yes, he, he is. He... <laughs> you know, you're the cutest little trick. I just love your singing. And I can scream like a wounded buffalo, too. Oh, no, you won't. Your puppy will be tough. Listen, son, I love him, and she's not going to marry him because I'm going to marry him over your dead body. <laughs> Don't you tell me to shush. I'll show you how loud I can yell. If you think you can get it. Lucky, Cynthia's sore. I'll take care of Cynthia. Duck. Don't duck. Oh. <laughs> Got a nickel? Oh, uh. Hello? What goes on around here anyway, Jim? Red ants or something? Oh, just some natural interruptions. Uh, nothing important, really. Just... I know, but where's Steve? Thank you for a very lovely evening. I have to go home now and instruct the telephone company to disconnect my phone. I know, but Steve did... Kick him goodbye for me. Highway? Quiet. Hey, hey, wait a minute. What goes on here? Oh, it's it's just a temporary setback, that's all. Yeah, well, if anything goes wrong with that marriage, what'll happen to you will be kind of bad. And it won't be temporary. Yes, sir. And it won't be temporary with you boys if you let that guy get out of your sight because you got a new job now. You're fronting for Cupid. Hmm. Cupid. What are you laughing at? You heard the boss. And stop smoking. No smoking in here. You're smoking. You are. What makes you think I'm smoking? Do you have a cigar in your mouth? I got my shoes on, but I'm not walking. Oh, come on. Steve, what do you know about carbon monoxide? You won't need it. We're leaving for San Marcos at 4 o'clock. What's San Marcos? The tropics, South America. We have to get you both this afternoon. There's no time to lose. Hurry, come on. Well, why? You dope, she's going. Who sent the ass? 
Oh, she won't talk to me. She hates me. She'll never forgive me after last night. She's got to. You'll get around her on the boat. Come How on. How can we get around anybody on the boat? We haven't any tickets, have we? Don't argue. I'll get them. Oh, no, look, look, I'll get packed and go ahead and see the old man. Pack a pier and meet you at the bag of three. I mean, a pack of three and meet you at the bag of pier. I mean, I'll meet you at three. Uh, Thompson, yes. now don't get excited. Get a bag and, and pack the pier at uh, three. Get, we're sailing at four o'clock. Hurry up. Yes. Oh, Cynthia, I love you. Cupid. Stupid. Come on, the stairs. Mr. Harper is out. Quite sure of that? Well, I, I mean, he's almost out. He's leaving town this afternoon. We'll see. Mickey. See? Steve, don't be frightened, dear. I just came to say goodbye because I, I'm going out of your life forever. Oh, well, I hope you have a pleasant trip. Well, I see you're leaving town, eh? Yes, I'm in an awful hurry, Mickey. Uh, you know, Stevie, darling, even if we are parting, I'll always worry about you, you know that. Thanks. I wouldn't want you to catch cold or anything, so uh, promise me you'll take your warm overcoat. Oh, it's very hot down there, won't need it. Oh, but the nights are always chilly. In San Marcos? <laughs> No. Well, I guess you go your way and I go my way. Yes. I go your way and you go... You, I go. Uh, how's about a farewell snort? Well, the boat sails in an hour and have to be just one. Oh, just one, Stevie Weeby. <laughs> yeah, all right. I'm sorry I have to leave so soon. Oh, don't worry about that. Five minutes of four. Where is that guy? Maybe he's over my hotel suit. Costello, not your suit, your sweet. You're cute too, Abbott. I like you. Hey, hey Barry, stop, stop. stop. Will you please? There's no time for that. I can't even get him on the phone. Oh, must be out of order. You get on the taxi stand, wait there. You get in the cab with the hotel, see if he's left yet. Get going! All right, all right. Now, wait, wait. Come here, where are you going? Come here, over this way. And it's a low ground to back a third base. Ball game! Oh, jumbo ball game. There's the throw, and Dizzy Dean is safe at first base. Dizzy Dean on first base. Do you like ball game? I love it. Come here. You know, don't say a word to Roscoe. You know I have a ball team of my own. You have? Sure. But you know they give these ball players nowadays very peculiar names. Funny names. Nicknames, you know, like uh, Dizzy Dean and... His brother Daffy? Daffy Dean. What's the fellow's names on the team? Well, now, let's see. We have who's on first, what's on second, I don't know who's on third. That's what I want to find out. I'm saying who's on first, what's on second, I don't know who's on third. Are you the manager? Yes. You know the fellow's names? Well, I should. Well, who's on first? Yes. I mean the fellow's name. Who? The first baseman. Who is on first? That's what I want to find out. That's what I'm telling you, man. You got a first baseman? Certainly. Who's playing there? Yes. I mean, the fellow's name. Yes, who? On first base. That's the man's name. That's whose name? Yes. Have you got a contract with the first baseman? Well, naturally. Who signed the contract? Well, now, you wouldn't expect anybody else to sign it. But who? Yes. Was when it? you pay off the first baseman every month, who gets the money? Every dollar of it. He does. Yes. Man. Every buck. Every buck. He gets every buck. Mm-hmm. Look, all I'm trying to find out is what is the fellow's name on first base? Oh, now, wait a minute. Let's straighten that out. What is on second I'm name? not asking you who's on second. Who is on first? I don't know. Oh, he's on third. Now, we're not talking about... How did I get on third base? You mentioned his name. I mentioned his name. Yes. If I mentioned the third baseman's name, who did I say is on third? Oh, no. Who's on first? Never mind first. I want to know what's the fellow's name on third base. But what's on second? Who's on second? Who's on first? I don't know. He's on third. There I go, back on third base again. Well, I can't help Let's that. Let's you and I stay on third base. Don't go off. Well, what is it you want to know? Who is playing third base? Why do you insist on putting who on third base? Now, who am I putting on third base? Yes, but we don't want him there. You don't want who there? No. So what's the guy's name belongs there? What belongs on second? Who belongs on second? Who is on first? I don't know. Third base. Third base. Now I'm back on third base again. Well, I can't help that. You got a pitcher on a team? Naturally. 
What's the pitcher's name? No, what is on second? Who's on second? Who's on first? I don't know. Third, Third base. base. Look, I'm a catcher too, you know. What do you mean? I'm a catcher. But what about? I'll catch on your team. Go. The heavy hitter gets up. So? He bunts the ball. Me being a good catcher, I, I want to throw the ball to first base, so I pick up the ball and throw it to who? Now, that's the first thing you said right. That's the first thing I said right. Mm -hmm. I don't even know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Look, all I want to know is when I pick up the ball, I throw it to first base, who gets it? Right, right, absolutely right. Naturally, if you throw the ball to first base, who is bound to get it? I don't know. Third, Third base. base. What time is it? Well, it's about half past two. Half past? Oh, I really ought to be going. It's wonderful how you hold your drink. Oh, liquor never affects me. <clears throat> hey, who do you think you are, Humphrey Bogart? Oh, Humphrey Bogart. Can I have your autograph? Quiet, that's the boss. Quiet, Mug. I'll ship this case of scotch down to San Marco. Get her out of here. Listen, I go where I like, when I like. Get her out of town. Uh, where to, boss? Kansas City, a nice, dry, cool place. You heard what the boss said? Come on. Hey, I will punch you right in the nose. You're gonna punch me right in the nose? That's right. Not around it. No. Right in it. Yeah. A tough kid. Toughy. Feel that. Not there, here. Oh. Feel that. Go ahead. That's enough. Let go. All right. All, go. all right. Go. All right. Let go. Come on. Come on. Get her out of town. Okay, boss. Get out of the way. Come on. You heard hey, the boss. Hey, you let go. Oh, come on out of here. Come on. Get out of here. Go. Get out. Open come the on. door. I can't. I got my hands full. Uh, yeah. Come on out. No soap, sir. The lady refuses to see you. She says she'll remain in her cabin as long as you're on board. What does she want me to do? Jump overboard? She made some su suggestions, sir. Well, that's all right. I'll wait here. I sent another note in with a T. Possible if you glance in, sir, you'll see that your efforts are hopeless. You mean that's her cabin there? Yes, sir. Why didn't you tell me before? You didn't ask me, sir. Well, that's fine, Stuart, but uh, you forgot the salt lemons. Sorry, madam. I'll bring them. Oh, and Stuart, will you tell Mr. Moore to climb a tree? Yes, ma'am. You and your kids? What? I mean, can you play it? Oh, for sure. Good. Thanks. You and your kids. Well, that's one way to get a lady out in the open. I meant every word of it. Speaking for Steve, of course. Well, if you're speaking for Steve, you can talk to yourself. Cynthia, please. You made a terrible mistake last night. You mean I saw a terrible mistake last night? Oh, you certainly did. You see, Nikki isn't Steve's girlfriend. She's, she's mine. Does that make her community property? Oh. Uh, phone booth? Mm-hmm. Well, you see, Mickey has a very peculiar drawback. She's even been to doctors about it. Uh, whenever she gets near a man, she simply has to kiss him. She must be nice to go around with. She's a terrible problem. Practically uh, psychopathic. Practically polygamous. But why do you bother with a girl like that? I sometimes wonder myself. Uh, so you see, Steve is an innocent victim. Well, I still don't see why he didn't come and tell me himself. Well, there seemed to be something wrong with your phone. <laughs> <laughs> and had off the hook trouble. <laughs> so you won't let a silly misunderstanding like that interfere with your marriage? Well, Lucky, you seem to feel very strongly about it. Oh, I do. You and Steve are simply made for each other. So you will forgive him, won't you? <laughs> All right, John Alden, you win. Mr. Moore! Mr. Moore! Radio Graham's in. Thank you. Excuse me. Oh, yes, you go right ahead. Bad news? Oh, oh, no, good news. Uh, uh, Steve is flying down to San Marcos. Oh, wonderful. Let me see. Oh, it slipped out of my fingers. Come, Chi Chi, come to Mama. Come, Chi Chi, come to Mama. Oh, that's a good boy. Chi-Chi! 
Chi Chi, oh, you saved him. Young man, you're a hero. You are a hero. Why, I wouldn't lose Chi Chi for a million dollars. Now, there's a man. What's his name? Jim Moore. Jim Moore. I knew it. He loves dogs and he adds up to eight. If you must marry somebody, why don't you marry an eight man? Oh, well, you forget I'm engaged to marry Steve. And you forget you hate Steve. That's why we're going to San Marcos. Oh, no, darling. We're going to San Marcos so I can marry Steve on Saturday. You're nuts, madame. I certainly am. Return to our pleasure domes. Here in San Marcos, our chief industry is low and our chief export is happiness. <laughs> Senor Escobar, still the same cute old horse thief. <laughs> more and more, I feel that this ain't Kansas City. You shouldn't have let her buy the tickets. Well, don't be so suspicious, boys. I, I just took the longest way around so I could spend more time with you, Angel. Now be good, boys, and tell me a joke. Well, I don't know any jokes. I know one. You know what? I wrote it myself. Oh, behave yourself. Brand new story. Nobody ever heard it before. You wrote it? Yeah. And it's brand new? Yeah, she'll like it. You get a kick out of it. Is it funny? Yeah. The only thing is I don't need you to help me. I tell it all by myself. Brand new joke. Yeah, it's all about a whale, a ship, and Jonah. And it's, it's brand cute. new. It's funny. Don't worry. She'll laugh. Now, once upon a time, there was a whale. What kind of a whale? And this whale, a plain everyday whale. All right. I don't want to know what kind of whale. What do you think I hang around with him? I don't. I don't. What do you think I do? Belong to a whale gang? Shh. A whale, that's all. all that's right. the fodder to the sardine. Yes, all right. Now, see, the whale was in the ocean. What ocean? And, uh, what ocean? An ocean. An ocean? A plain, everyday ocean. So, pick out an ocean. What do I care? That's immaterial to me. Uh, okay, the immaterial ocean. Oh, what kind of a story is this? Now, the whale was in the ocean, see, and he was minding his own bitters, but he was following a ship. What ship? And this ship was... What? A ship that swims in the water. You mean a swim ship? Yeah. Now, the whale was following a swim ship, and he... Who ever heard of a swim ship? I don't know. You're telling me. Well, story. why don't you let me tell a story? Stop interrupting me. Keep your mouth shut, Go will you? Go ahead. Now, the ship was following the whale. Be the what? Now I got the ship following the whale. The whale was following the ship. The whale was following the ship because he was hungry. Naturally. Now, uh, Captain Jonah was a captain of a boat, see? And he didn't want the whale to capsize a boat, so he threw the whale over a barrel of apples. What kind of apples? Uh, just... Irksome, isn't he? What kind of apples? Apples that grow on a tree. Well, there's all kinds of apples. There's Baldwin apples, there's Frost apples. Crab there's... apples! All right. Excuse me. Now, he threw him over a pile of crab apples, and the whale was still hungry, so then Captain Jonah threw him over a stool. What kind of stool? Who said that? I did. That's in case you ask. Uh... Three-legged camp stool it was, precisely speaking. Now, Captain Jonah, see, after he did that, the whale was still hungry, then Captain Jonah figured the only way I could save the boat and my passengers is to sacrifice myself. And he did. He threw a beautiful jackknife dive right into the mouth of the whale. Now, the whale ate Captain Jonah, he ate the apples and he ate the stool, and then the whale swam away. Look, wait a minute, look, how much more of this story have you got to tell? Just another second. Now, what do you keep interrupting <laughs> all, all, me for? All right, go ahead. Ah, biffle dipple. Here, here, here. Now, you made me say a bad word. Please. I'm sorry. It's all right, go ahead. Now, three years later, they caught that very same whale, they cut him open, and what do you think they found? Now you get ready to laugh. Uh, wait a minute, just one more interruption. Uh, you're not trying to insult this little girl's intelligence by getting away with that old story about the time they caught the whale and they cut him open and there they found Jonah seated on that stool selling those apples three for a nickel, are you? That's, that's not the... No, it couldn't be that story. No, 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 it couldn't be that. I mean, every little schoolboy knows that story. But you go ahead and tell us. Uh, what did they find when they cut the whale open? Come on. What did they find when they cut the... <laughs> now, don't laugh. After all, I enjoy a hearty laugh as well as you do, and if it's funny, we'll both enjoy a hearty laugh. Ah, oh, senorita, there's no danger in bullfighting, but there is much in the glance from a lovely woman's eyes. Oh, that's a very gallant remark, senor. What can a man say with so much beauty before him? <laughs> Isn't Rodolfo wonderful? Just wait till you see him in his cute little Toreador suit. Uh. I can wait. Uh, my car, I should say our car is here, senorita. What do you mean, our car? I, Rudolph, am showing the town to the senorita. And I, Cynthia Merrick, am looking forward to it. And I, Kitty Marblehead, shall take Chichi down to the briny. 
Don't you think you should take a bullfighter along? Uh, uh, oh, oh, yes, yes, of course. But, and he only adds seven. Won't you come with us, Rodolfo? But I don't know if I can not swim. That's what would make it interesting. But... Isn't Jim a simply charming fellow? All I can say, Senora, is uh, I wish he were a bull. Like Jim and that Merrick Dane. It sure did. Well, nonsense. It's only the sun in your eyes. Is that what it is? Sure. Come on, boys. Come on. Ah, <laughs> greetings to our. Uh, thank you very much. I'm looking for a man called Steve Harper. Uh, greetings to our pleasure, Dorms. And I. That's enough, uh, brother. Has he arrived yet? Uh, very soon. He's to be married on Saturday. Not while well, I'm here. Greetings to our pleasure, though. Thank you. I'm in a hurry. Yeah, but you have just arrived and you must be greeted. Uh, no? No. Well, I'm awfully sorry. May 12th again. What kind of a song is that to sing to a lady in the moonlight? The only safe kind. Safe? Well, good night. Oh, where are you going? Oh, uh, I don't know. Rudolfo said something about a rumble lesson. Rudolfo? Well, he's got a grin on him like that alligator. Well, anyway, I bet he's a wow under the tropic moon. Well, anybody be a wow under a moon like that. Well, good night. Uh, uh, well, it was fun, wasn't it? I mean, shopping in the native quarter. They didn't give us a bad night for dessert. No, it is lovely, isn't it? So are you. Oh. Why did you say, oh, like that? I, I don't know. I didn't say, oh, any particular way. I. Just said, oh. oh. Well, good night, Jim. Cynthia, I'm... Lucky! Lucky! Oh, there you are. I've been combing the whole town for you two. Oh, don't you look wonderful, darling? <laughs> so do you. I mean, uh, did you have a nice trip? Oh, fine, fine. What's that? Huh? Uh, fine. Darling, you must forgive me for something. For what? For thinking that awful psychopathic phone booth girl was yours. How's that again? Well, you see, uh, I explained to Cynthia that Mickey was a friend of mine. That's awfully nice of you to look. I mean, nice of him? Well, it takes a pal to be a pal. If, if, if he made you believe, I mean, if he got you to forgive me, uh, then I ought to be grateful, wouldn't anything, uh, buddy? What are you doing that at the hotel for? I, I didn't see anybody doing that to the hotel. Well, if, if, if somebody wasn't doing that to the hotel, then I'm crazy. Well, I think I'll leave Romeo alone with his Juliet. Oh, no, I've got to talk to you. You mean you came a thousand miles just to talk to him? Yes. Well, to find friendship. Well, what's the matter with her? As a bridegroom, you are as inspiring as a cold donut. Listen, I wanted to get you alone. Mickey is here, right in the hotel. Mickey's here? Yes. What are we going to do if she gets to Cynthia? Mickey, Mickey, Mickey. What are you looking so pleased about? You know, Steve, I, I think that girl's in love with you. Who, Cynthia? No, Mickey, why to follow you all the way here? What devotion? Who, Cynthia's? No, Mickey. You know, you're headed for the biggest mistake in your life. With Mickey? No, oh, Cynthia. Must be the change in climate, I... Excuse me, please, Senor Moore, but a telegram have arrived for you. Open it, please. You want me to read it? Yes, go ahead. It's from the Papa again. For love of heaven, see that knot is tied. Firm won't survive paying off. I won't survive Roscoe, counting on you to save me. Signed, Dad. <laughs> Very pretty, you father wires, eh? Cynthia, Jim. Cynthia, Mickey, Mickey, Mickey. Mickey, Cynthia. Uh, Jim, you, you've got me all confused just now. I, You're confused. I'm all mixed up between Mickey and Cynthia. 
How can you get mixed up? I mean, she's the most beautiful girl in the world. Mickey. Oh, Cynthia. And what a disposition. It's lovely. Mickey? No, Cynthia. You'd be making a terrible mistake. But Cynthia. No, Mickey. I guess I need a good night's sleep. Mickey, Cynthia, Cynthia. I don't know. If only Jim and Steve weren't such good friends. If only I'd never met either one of them. Well, there's always Rodolfo. Without the F, of course. <laughs> Not so, Chi Chi. May I come in? Well, there's a rumor to the effect that you are in, but there's a way around that. Won't you? Sit down. Help yourself. Thank you. Well, now I understand the thumb waving. Do you remember me? I... Oh, yes, yes, I remember you very well. The last time I saw you, you were wearing a very becoming telephone booth, trimmed with Steve. Oh, my little Stevie. You, you mean you're a little lucky, don't you? I mean, you're Jim's girl. Oh, no. Steve's. Uh, you wouldn't, by any chance, be sleepwalking, would you? Oh, no, I just dreamed myself across this balcony just to show you this. You see, Jim has insured your marriage to Steve for me and dollars. Oh, no, that's impossible. <laughs> but true, I hooked it from Steve and myself in person. So you see, Jim's out a million dollars if you don't marry Stevie. Kind of a dirty trick to play on a lady, huh? They need this trick of the week. Oh, but they're not going to get away with it. Not with little Cynthia, they're not. I'll get even with those two if it's the last thing I ever do. Are you with me? So long as I get Stevie. Don't worry, you can have them. You can have both of them on a platter garnished with parsley. What are you going to do? I'm going to give them a dose of their own love insurance. You'll have to wear out the carpet, Lucky. What are we going to do? Oh, get rid of her. Send her back to New York. Who, Cynthia? No, Mickey! You don't have to yell at me. Hello? Hello, darling. I was just thinking about you. Hello, darling. Cynthia. About the bullfight tomorrow, I was wondering if you'd get an extra ticket. It's for a perfectly darling little girl who just dropped in for a chat with me. You know, she's that sweet little friend of Jim's, Mickey Fitzgerald. Mickey! You're talking to Cynthia, you dope. So is Mickey. She's in Cynthia's room. What? Oh, yes, he, he'll be more than delighted. Uh, she's invited her to the bullfight. All right, darling. Good night. Pleasant dreams. And I hope you chose. What are we going to do now, Lucky? Oh, we're ruined. And don't call me Lucky! Everything's okay, boys. Yeah, put that Mickey locked in the room. Yeah, babe. She's in Cynthia's room! That's enough. A fine mess you got us in. You're fired. All right, then I'm fired. I You're quit. fired. I quit. Go Give ahead. me my money. Give me my money. All right. What money? What money? The money you owe me for my all salary. All right, all right. Don't get excited. I'm supposed to get a dollar a day, you know. I work for you one year. That's 365 days equals 365 hours. Give me that 365 hours and I'll get out the lab decay. Now, wait a minute. Not so fast. How many hours a day did you work? Eight hours a day. And how many hours are there in a day? Don't try to put anything over on me, will you, Abbott? What do you mean? Look, there's 24 hours in a day. All but February, which has 28. All right, that's right. 24 hours in a day. And you only work eight hours a day? Then you only work a third of each day. Now, a third of uh, 365 is approximately $121. So you actually only have $121 coming to you? Yeah. $121? That's right. Well, give me the $121. Uh, but you didn't work Sundays, did you? No. No, and there's 52 Sundays in a year. So we'll deduct 52 from 121 leaving uh, $69 coming to you. Well, give me the $69. Uh, but... What's with the but? Wait a minute, just a minute. You only worked a half a day on Saturday. Am I right? Here comes... Oh, wait a minute. You only worked a half a day on Saturday. That's all, just half a day. Okay, now there's 52 Saturdays in a year. Now, half of 52 is uh, 26. So we'll deduct 26 from 69, 
uh, leaving $43 coming to you. You sure that? I'm positive. I mean, I don't want you to cheat yourself. Well, that's mighty thoughtful of you to look out for my interests. I might as well look out for yours. You already killed mine. So give me that $43. Uh, but <laughs> just a minute. You took a vacation, didn't you? Yes. Yeah. Two weeks. Two weeks, that's uh, 14 days. Now, a dollar a day, that's $14. So we'll deduct 14 from 43, leaving uh, the sum of $29 coming. The sum of? The sum of. If I get some of it, I'll be lucky. Oh, well, now wait. Give me the $29. But? but? Now I know it as good as you do. Wait a minute, just don't get excited. You took time out for lunch, didn't you? Oh, no, Evan. Not that. Please don't take that away from me. Yes. One little hour a day, that's all I took. One hour a day? I didn't eat much. Now, wait a minute. One little bit of hour, that's that big. Right. That's right. One hour a day, 365 days, that's 365 hours. That comes to about 15 days, I take it. You might as well take it. You've been taking everything out. So? 15 from 29 is 14, but now I know it better than you do. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm glad I thought of this. Do you know there's 13 holidays in a year that you didn't work? This is gonna cost plenty, too. Wait a minute, just a minute. You didn't work those 13 days. No. Well, you had $14 coming to you, so we'll deduct 13 from the 14, leaving the exact sum of $1 coming to you. How do you like that? I'm supposed to get $365, and I wind up with a buck! Oh, grazie, signor. <laughs> this is a fine time to take a nap. And now we have the sport of ex-king. And if anybody faints, we have ex-nurses. Oh, but Aunt Kitty, nobody's going to faint. We're all having too much fun, aren't we, Steve, darling? Oh, yeah, oh, yes, it's, it's a riot. <laughs> oh, Mickey, why don't you put your head on Jim's shoulder? I'm sure you could see much better if you did. Oh, no, she doesn't want to put her head on my shoulder. Oh, yes, I do. Oh, now, Lucky, don't be shy with Mickey and me. We both understand all about love, don't we, Mickey? And how? What a wonderful shoulder you have. I can't see if she's going to sit like I... Why, Steve, I believe you're actually jealous. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful, Mickey, what these two boys will do for each other? Isn't it a wonderful friendship? <laughs> oh, where's the bull? Why, darling, there's plenty of it around here, don't you think so? Oh, don't move your shoulder, Lucky. Oh, it's so heavenly. Oh, there he is. Oh, isn't he cute, this darling little suit? Oh, the ball? It's for the senorita. Oh, no, no, mustn't do that. That means he's dedicating the ball to Cynthia. Uh, doesn't it, senor Escobar? But of a certainty, it is almost a declaration of love. Oh. Well, I'm glad there's nothing personal about it. Hasn't he the most beautiful legs you've ever seen? Who, the bull? Oh, there is a man. Now, look here, Mickey. Um, uh, that's Cynthia. Mickey's here. Yes, oh. you boys are a little confused, I'm afraid. But there's one thing I'm certain of. Rudolfo is divine. Oh, I don't know. I, I think Jim has a cuter nose. Do you? Let me see, Jim. Come on, Lucky, show Cynthia your nose. Come on. Stop it, will you? Why should he show you his nose? Isn't it <laughs> sweet the way they stick together? <laughs> oh, what a pretty ball. You know, Steve, it's so much fun being engaged. I don't think we'll get married tomorrow. Why not? You know, I think you'd be much happier if you waited until you got to New York for the wedding. 
why are you so interested in when we get married? Why, Stevie, you know, I've always been interested in when we get married. Oh, did, did nobody feel a drop of rain? Now, wait a minute, Abbott. If I'm going to stay and watch over a girl, I want my old job back. All right, but not for the same money. Okay. All right. What money? You, yeah. The good humor man. No, no, tamales. Hot dogs. And, and those ants, uh, those ants, the they're good. Hot dogs. Hey, you, hey. hey. Come here. Come here. What's the matter with you? Here, go on. Oh, yeah. Hot dog. Give me a hot dog, too. What time's the floor show start here? Shh, quiet, please, quiet. No floor show, huh? No floor show. Oh, thanks a lot, kid. Here you are. Hey, old boy. No, I don't eat mustard. Yeah. <laughs> mustard goes with the hot dog. Yeah, well, not with mine. I eat a plain. Mustard was made for the hot dog. Look, I don't care what it's made for. I'm not going to eat it. I don't like it. Oh, well, that's Do different. I have to eat something I don't like? No, I didn't know that. I mean, after all, I don't want to go around eating something that's going to make me sick. Well, I didn't know Mustard that. Mustard makes me sick. Well, then you shouldn't eat it. I mean, after all, I'm a happy kid. I got a lot to live I for. I know that, Lou. I don't want to walk around the street sick. All right, now, don't If care. I eat mustard and I walk around the street sick, I can't get a job. What happens to my wife and kids? What do you mean? Yeah, I got a wife and two children. Well, what about it? My kids wind up in the orphan asylum. Oh, behave yourself. You're a fine guy sending my kids to an orphan asylum. Who's sending who where? What are my kids ever do to you? Nothing at all. What right you got to put them away in the orphan asylum? Do you know what you're After saying? After all, I'm able to support them, children. I'm... You got no right to put them away. Don't get excited. Come on, get my kids out of the orphan asylum. Now, wait a minute. What started all this? Mustard. Well, I mean, it's there if you want it. Well, you can take it away. I don't want it. Listen, what I'm trying to convey to you is that the hot dog and the mustard go together. Let them go together. I don't want to spoil any romance. Oh, talk sense. Oh, I don't like it. So you don't like I it? I like Wishershire, Shears, Shores. You what? Wishershire, Shears, Shores. Worcestershire, shire, shire, shosh. You can't even say it. Yeah. But you, you don't like mustard. No, I don't care. Give me a reason. Who are you that you shouldn't like mustard? What are you, some big shot or something? Too big a guy to like mustard? What did mustard ever do for me? I'll be here. Why should I throw myself out on account of mustard? Mustard any better than I am? Go on, pick your friends. What do you want? Me or mustard? Now, wait a minute. Go ahead, take mustard. Just a minute, just a minute. Do you know where mustard comes from? I know they don't scrape it off a mustard plaster. Certainly not. They manufacture mustard. Do you know they spend millions of dollars every year to put up factories just to manufacture mustard? Do you know those factories employ thousands and thousands of men just to manufacture mustard? Do you know those men take care of thousands of families and homes all on account of mustard? Huh. And you, just because you don't like mustard, what do you want them to do? Close those factories down and put all those people out of work? Wait a minute. Do you mean to stand there and tell me just because I don't eat mustard, I'm closing down the mustard factories? Now, wait a minute. I... Are you trying to tell me that those thousands of people are making one little jar of mustard just for me? Oh, I'll explain If that. they are, you can tell them not to make any more because I'm not going to eat it. All oh, right, forget about you it. You can lay them off. Sure. Who am I to support thousands? Oh, why stand here and argue with you? You said it. Rodolfo, let's get out of this darn moonlight. Where are you going? To look for Steve. Hello, hello, operator, operator. Operator, what about my New York call? Well, do I have to wait all night? Hello, hello. Oh, hello, Dad. Hello. What? I can't hear you. Wait a minute. Hello. Now. Listen, Dad, a terrible thing has happened. I've fallen in love. Good. What's so terrible about that? But Dad, you haven't heard who the girl is. I don't care. If you like her, I like her. So congratulations and all that sort of thing. But listen, Dad, this just isn't any girl. This girl is the girl who's the girl that's the girl that... Well, what I mean is she's the girl... I get it. She's a girl. Well, stop yapping you $20 a minute. We can't afford it. I say we can't afford it. We're broke. We're busted. There was a jewel robbery in Great Neck, a bank holdup in Brooklyn, some very unusual weather in California, and a skunk at Mrs. Worthington's lawn party. And they used to call me lucky. But that's peanuts compared to that million-dollar wedding you're on now. How's it coming along? She marrying him tomorrow? Yep. She's marrying him tomorrow.
Wrong number. What's the matter with you? Don't say anything about the wedding. What happened? A spy. Where? In the next room. The... Oh, behave. Come no, here. No, no. Come no. here. Come on, come on. Come here a minute. Come on, see me. Just wait a minute. Here, here. Bashful. I'm bashful. Wait a minute. It's you, it's you, it's you. Don't get excited. There you are. Oh, hello. You going to the wedding? Certainly you're going to the wedding, the same as the boss told don't you. Don't mention the word boss. I'll tell you, I, I don't care about the boss anymore. I want to meet the boss. I want to tell him a thing or two. I want to meet him face to face. I want to... What do you want? I want my mama. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. Now, what about it? What about it? Yeah, what about it? What about what? What about what, what? That's what I say. What, what do, do you, you say? say? What about it? What about this wedding? Oh, wedding. Marriage. Congratulations, Abbott. I'm not getting married. No? Mm-hmm. Congratulations, well, boss. Well, give that to him. What about the wedding between Steve and Cynthia? Is it going to happen by noon today? Why, boss, that's taking place now. Yeah? Certainly. Well, let's get out of here. Yeah, come on. Senor, Senor Don't interrupt me. I am thinking of love. But, Senor, we must know when to start the farandola. Oh, the farandola, our national dance. When I shoot the gun, the wedding is over and the farandola will commence. Got the ring? Yes, I've got it. Oh, pretty. You, you look very Mickey. This, I mean, Mickey. Well, congratulations, boys. I never saw a more ghastly looking pair. Bueno. Shall we commence? No, Senor Escobar. I'm sorry to have caused you all this trouble, but the wedding is off. You see, I've just made the very interesting discovery that both the groom and the best man are a couple of first-class heels. What did I tell you? You told oh, me. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, don't I'm... waste any sympathy, because, you see, instead of marrying me, heel number one gets a million dollars from heel number two. So, goodbye, good luck, and have fun. Just a minute, baby. Put them up, folks. Put them up. I got a lot of money invested in this wedding. <laughs> so get going. Isn't there a man in the room? If you marry them, Senor Escobar, I will kill you. Yeah, but the man has a pistol and he must consider his point. Yeah, me and Costello want to go on living too. Who invited those dreadful people? I did. I said marry him. By the power invested in me, as mayor of San Marcos, I don't Alvarado Sepulveda. Oh, cut out that Chinese chatter and go on with his wedding. Do you, Stephen Harper, take this lady to be your lawful wedded wife? Yeah, well, it's a little sudden, but should I? What? Do you, Stephen Harper? I said, tell him. Yeah, yeah, I guess maybe I do. It's very nice of you. Do you, Cynthia Merrick, take this man to be your lawful wedded husbands? Tired, boss? Come on, let's get out of here. I'm not going to go until I get good and ready. Uh, I'm ready. Come on, man. The bottom door! Jim! A little service here, please. Yes, but you are not the bride. With a gun, I am. As the mayor of San Marcos, I, Don Alvarado Sepulveda, Cienega, San Vicente La Brea, Figueroa, Escobar. Yeah, this is getting a little heavy for you. It would just a moment. Hey, try that. Shoot, Escobar, or we will. Listen to me for a minute. No, I won't listen to you. There's no possible way you can whitewash yourself or your loathsome love insurance. I got that silly idea before I met you, and I regretted it every minute because I fell madly in love with you. What is this now, alibi insurance? I hate insurance! Well, aren't you packed yet? Packed? Have you been drinking? Oh, uh, just a little bit. Are you sober? Oh, sober as a judge. Oh, Senor Escobar, if only you were a nice man. Oh. oh, Madame, please allow me. Please, please, please. Oh, no, no, not if you went on talking for the rest of your life. Which won't be long now, because here comes Roscoe. Don't you dare lay a finger on him. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I was just trying to tell you that Steve married the little Mick and now we don't have to pay off. 
don't you lay a finger. She loves me. He's going to make a wonderful husband. You don't even know what a husband is. A husband is what's left of a sweetheart after the nerve has been killed. Keep the remarks to yourself. 